All right. Last video, we talked about the 72 Chevy Cheyenne and what we're going to do. We've got the dash vents to put in. So, not going to waste a lot of time. Let's get right into it. First thing we got to do is try to get this cluster out. All right, shouldn't be a whole lot to it. We've got a screw here and a screw here. That'll take this plate off the bottom, and then we have a series of screws around 50-year-old plastic, so we're gonna have to be kind of careful with that. back in the hole so we're not hunting them later. Let's mention one other thing too. You're dealing with these older vehicles, a lot of the stuff in behind the dash with the electrical could be live. So unhook your negative battery cable off of the battery so that if you accidentally short anything out back here, you're not letting the smoke out. Let's see if this rubber will slide up. That comes loose. I gotta figure out how to get the knob off. There Here we go. The wiper is actually has a small set screw that you loosen up. And then you just take and spin the retaining ring off and that allows it to come out and you can leave the wiper switch actually mounted. The headlight switch, I'm going to have to reach up in the dash, I'm pretty sure, and hit, the, hit a release button. I believe it's going to be set up like a Ford. There it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you gotta stand on your head, kids. So we can get this to turn. There it is. Trying to keep all your little pieces together. so good. Alright, well, let's see if we can get these screws undone. See if we can drop this steering column just a tinch.
see if we can leave it hang there if that's going to be enough. Catch it on something. Let's see. moved up here where you can actually see there's an electrical connector and as I said a minute ago there's an oil pressure line an actual mechanical oil pressure line factory on this factory gauge cluster and getting down in here I'm going to use a pair of needle nose Leatherman because they're small and they're easy to manipulate um, you probably could get a small wrench back there, but it's going to be a little more difficult to hang on to. But you do what you feel is best. I'm just going to be careful and not try not to strip it out. Tell you what, we'll come back here and after I get it out, because there's not much you can see back here, but I'll get it out and I'll give you a better view of what it actually looks like back here and what you're up against. All right, through the magic of editing. And we have one electrical connector. It's like a fiber optic that you have to undo right here. And it leads down to illuminate your shift indicator. All right, let's lay this to the side. We'll bring you over a little closer so you can see. All right. Right there is the oil fill line, oil, not oil fill, do oil pressure line they actually used hard line back in the day all right the electrical connector has some push tabs you push the tabs in and pull it out and that is where the electrical connector hooks on the back and you see you've got this printed circuit board which you always want to be very careful with all right, with that, let's get set up and we'll start looking what we got to do to put this uh, vent, vent tube in. All right. Let's see if we can get this little uh, box taken apart here. off get enough finagle room oh there's one little screw at the top can't see in, in the dark. Get that one loose. Okay. It's supposed to be one at the bottom, but apparently it fell out a few years ago. cables that we need to access is down here on the bottom so we can check that flapper door and see about making sure it's lubricated and there's a brand new looking blower resistor right there all right let me bring you in here let you see this 
this box, this plenum, see this right here? Slides in behind that. And then it had the two screws that held it up there. Well, this needs to have some kind of a seal around it because it has one, but over the years it has shrunk. So it is not really sealing much of anything. So we're gonna have to look into that. Get these two out here. Drop your screws. It's a new day, and uh, real quick, just want to show you, yeah, winter in the south. Told you we had temperate days. So, anyway, want to give you a quick little rundown of what we've had transpire over the last, you know, couple of days. Um, my customer came by. He brought by uh, some uh, vent balls to replace the uh, chrome vents. He brought me a glove box drawer liner. And while he walked up to the truck bringing me these parts, he got inside and he noticed that I had the dash cluster out. And the uh, one of the other things that he thought about was in that dash cluster, the temperature gauge had quit working. So what he has decided to do is he wants me to work and try to get the uh, temperature gauge working, the OEM temperature gauge, and he wanted me to replace these uh, chrome balls in the AC vents and all of the lights in the dash cluster have stopped working so we're going to get into that uh, make sure that the printed circuit board's good and replace all the bulbs probably all that's wrong with it is the bulbs so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to get in here and carefully get these vent pods apart and replace the chrome balls so hang on All right, well, when I pulled these pods out, I took a look at them to try to figure out how to get them apart. Well, it's pretty simple. You have a little clip here, here, and here, and it's actually molded into the housing, which is plastic, which is 50 years old, which they do sell reproduction versions, but they're not gonna come in this Hawaiian blue. So. I got to thinking, how am I going to get this apart? So I got to thinking, a round toothpick, six of them. Gently slide a round toothpick in behind each clip. And get my fingers to work. Slide them in. Now to push them open and hold them open. So you don't have to fumble around with trying to hold the, the clips out of the way of the tab. You can grab it, pull. You may have to go around and do a little finagling with it. And they may fall out and you have to re-stick them back in, but they will, they, it does work. I've already had it apart. And there it came, boom, all at once. Now, take your new chrome ball. Drop it down in there. You'll need to inspect this. This is like a, a piece of cork. Some of these I've understand or felt. This looks like some kind of cork. It's still in pretty good shape, but it's actually coming out. So, what we're gonna do, ah, it's not cork, this is felt. So anyway, what we're gonna do is I'm going to get some trim adhesive and we're going to glue this piece back in here so that it doesn't come out and get broken. Hang on, I'll get some trim adhesive and we'll get that handled.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the piece and clean it up a little bit. Over the years, dirt, and you've got the old dry adhesive that held the felt in place. So, we'll break clean, should be good. Get it good and clean. Have a nice, good surface, clean surface for the adhesive to stick to. Now on some of these plastics you got to kind of be careful in what kind of cleaners you use. You don't want to get too carried away with something that's too hot and melt your plastic. But uh, this is a pretty low volume, volatility brake clean and that did a pretty good job starting to get it cleaned up. Okay, now the trim adhesive you don't want to just go in there and go crazy and spray it because it'll end up getting stuck on the ball and then your your vent won't uh, will get stuck and you won't be able to move it. What I have is a little container. I have some trim adhesive and I have a, uh, an old disposable artist brush. One that doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to spray just a little bit of that trim adhesive in that cap. And I'm going to take a brush, an old, like I said, this old disposable brush, and I'm actually just going to brush it on. Because that trim adhesive likes to go everywhere. So just brush it on the area it needs to go. Make sure it's thoroughly coated, and then let it sit. Now, we're going to do the same thing to the back of this felt. We might take a couple of coats on this felt. Once your adhesive has tacked up, you know, very carefully place it back down in the vent, but you need to make sure that it has started to tack up. And just press it down really good. All right. Now, the diverter ball goes down in there, just drops down in there, and this piece only goes in one way. That's not it. There it is. It only goes in one way. It'll only clock and line up with the little clips one way. Pop it down in there. That looks a whole lot better than that. And now these vents be good for another 50 years, maybe. All right, we're gonna get in here and try to change out one of these vent tubes. Alright, we got the first piece of tubing out and you can see where they've got it pretty well squeezed up in there behind the radio and stuff. That's hot garbage. But we've already started going back together with the other stuff. We're going to video it, show you how to do it. But right now, I'm going to go hang out with my grand, my grand pup here. This is Ophelia. Say hi Ophelia. Yeah, I think she's a little camera shy. But don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, come on back. We've got a lot more to do on this old truck.